Hi there, welcome to another AMA Happy Campers RV Hookup Hacks video. I'm Liam with AMA, and joining me is red and blue seal RV technician, Steve Hawkridge. Hey Liam. Hey Steve. So today, Steve's gonna be taking us through our RV and our electrical hookup, including the three different type of amps that we could be plugging into at a campsite. And with Steve's technical expertise, we're gonna charge up your RV knowledge so that you can safely and confidently hook up once you get to the campsite. Be sure to stick around for the end of the video when we'll also show you where you can plug in to some other resources for taking care of your RV electrical. So Steve, what's the first thing that we need to look at when getting ready to plug in our electric? Uh, first thing we're gonna do is check our battery. And to do that, we wanna make sure we have our Canadian standard safety approved equipment, like our gloves, goggles, and our footwear. Okay, so why do I need to check my battery? Uh, when we plug in, if we don't have the proper fluid levels, our battery could blow up. That's a good reason. It is. So how do I check my battery? How do I check fluid levels? So what we do is on our batteries, the ones that are serviceable, we pop off the top and we make sure that the fluid is covering the plates. Okay, great. And so once I know my battery's okay, am I ready to plug in? Next thing we want to do before we plug in, is make sure we have the proper cord for the trailer, the proper amperage. We also want to check the cord to make sure there's no damage, make sure there's no cuts, that it hasn't been run over with a lawnmower or anything like that. So Steve, now we know that we have a cord that's in great shape. What do we need to know about what we're plugging into? First thing we need to know is in the type of power source that we're plugging into. Uh, whether it be 50, 30, or 15 amp. Uh, we also want to make sure a lot of campgrounds have a breaker hidden underneath the lip here. We want to make sure that it's not tripped and that it's actually on. So 15, 30, 50, how, how do I know which one's which? When we look at the plugins here, the four prong is the 50 amp plug-in. The larger three prong is the 30 amp. And then your standard household plug-in would be the 15 plug-in. Okay. Yeah. And you said that these are also a surge protector? Yeah, we are protected with a surge protector. So if we have a campground that is an older style campground, or if we're plugged into a generator, we want to make sure that we're plugged into a surge protector to protect all the expensive equipment and boards in our trailer, like our appliances for our fridge and whatnot. Why do we need to worry about how much we're plugged into? Generally, what we want to do is it's like a household plugged into a little pedestal. So if we have a 50 amp trailer, we want to make sure we're maximizing all the power that uh, the trailer can use. So we'll use a 50 amp when we can. If not, we'll go down to 30, if not 15. So we try to use the, the, the largest power possible that suits the trailer. Okay. What if I don't have the, the right plug-in or if I have any questions? If you have, don't have the right style of plug-in, you can always buy adapters to get down to the power source that you need. Now, speaking of power, how much do I really need if I want to run something like my air conditioner in my trailer? It depends from trailer to trailer, but if you have a generator that pushes out uh, 3000 watts or greater, that would typically run your air conditioner if it's an intelligent generator. Great, thanks for those tips, Steve. And one tip that's important to remember is call ahead to the campground you're gonna be staying at just to confirm what kind of power they'll have available when you arrive. Now you can avoid any shocking surprises. So Steve, what do we have to look consider when it comes to any do's or don'ts with your RV electrical? Well, first off, after we're plugged in, we wanna confirm that our trailer has power and it's as simple as checking the light in your microwave to make sure it's on. We also wanna check the cord again to make sure there's any damage. When we plug in, we do make sure, want to make sure we're not stepping in any puddle or water so we don't get electrocuted. And when we do plug in, we also want to make sure that we have our battery connected at the front end of the trailer. But if I'm plugging in, why do I need a battery? Your battery acts as a filter for your appliances and the expensive components in your trailer. If there is any fluctuations, it will filter out the power to make sure that those fluctuations don't touch the expensive components. What about using a space heater in my RV instead of turning on my furnace? A lot of people ask that question and they like to use the space heaters because they already have paid for the power and they don't want to waste their own propane. However, space heaters take a lot of electricity and they could, can do done some damage to your trailer like melt your cord ends, things like that. So it's better to use your furnace instead of a space heater. 
Thanks, Steve. I'm feeling so much more confident now about hooking up my own RV electrical, and I hope that our viewers are as well. If you have questions about your RV electrical, make sure that you connect with a professional before doing any work yourself. And make sure you sign up for our AMA Happy Campers Facebook group or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. <music>